This is TZGN. Apple have just released a computer that costs more than a car, loads of iOS updates, and see that? That thing. The end is near. Let's start with the news that both Xiaomi and Oppo in China yesterday released footage of smartphones with an underscreen camera that is completely invisible. Yes, the end of the notch is near. Both Xiaomi and Oppo have developed technology that they showcased yesterday. Just have a look at the videos. There is a camera underneath the screen. It's able to take images, but you can have the screen on top of it. You can watch videos without any interruption. No notches and no pop-up cameras either. Now this technology is still incredibly new. As far as I'm aware, it's not gonna be coming to smartphones this year at least. This has just been demonstrated. Xiaomi and Oppo have demonstrated that they can use this technology, but it is still quite far away from going into full scale production and being put in phones that can be sold to consumers. So they have managed to put a camera under there, the lens and everything that you need to take images, but the actual quality of the camera would just not be good enough to put in consumer devices at the moment. But obviously the first brand that is able to do this and put a camera under the screen of a smartphone and sell it to consumers is gonna get a big one up on the competition. The big question is who actually needs or wants this at the moment. See, if you don't use selfie cameras anyway, you'll just buy a pop-up phone because you'll never use the pop-up anyway. If you really want a good selfie camera, then you'll probably be okay with a notch and you certainly wouldn't buy a notchless phone with a camera under there that wasn't as good as you wanted. So that camera has to be good quality before they start selling a phone. Otherwise, it's just a bit of a gimmick. Xiaomi may put that in a Mi Mix 4 device. That is their device that's more expensive and they test out tech on that one. So they may be developing the Mi Mix 4 to put that camera technology into. It really all depends how quickly they can put this technology into a real phone that's available for sale. All right, moving on to iOS, the big news. At last, we have a dark mode in iOS 13. It's not actually fully black though. Just take a look at these screenshots. It's dark, but it's not black. So yeah, it's a dark mode. That is just so Apple to do something like that, to give us a dark mode that isn't exactly black, it's just darker and grayer. It's just so Apple to do that, but they've given us an iPad OS as well, which I'm really excited about. At the moment, the iPad is just so held back by its operating system, a hugely powerful device that you basically just can't do anything on. You definitely can't work on it like you can on a MacBook, but this new operating system looks more like the Mac OS. So I'm waiting for the day where we can just drop the MacBook and use the iPad as a big screen computer with some peripheral accessories like a mouse and a keyboard. And then if you want, just use an Apple Pencil to draw on there. It seems like the perfect modern computer. And last but not least, yes, Apple have released a computer worth $35,000. And if you want to add the new 6K monitor from Apple, this, according to The Verge, is going to cost you in the region of 50,000 US dollars. This is obviously the fully spec'd out version. If you go for the more normal setup, then you're looking at a starting price of around maybe five or $6,000. But this is something that does not get renewed every year. The MacBook Pro is a professional workstation. So the new monitor Apple are calling an XDR. Not content with high dynamic range, they're going for extra dynamic range. Apple are great at marketing, of course, but it looks a fantastic monitor. There are of course cheaper 6 or 8K monitors out there than this. I do wonder who on this planet Earth is going to spend $35,000 on a computer, but if I had the money, I probably would. You can go from an 8 to a 28 core processor, anywhere from 32 gigabytes to 1.5 terabytes of RAM, and you can put up to 4 terabytes of storage inside. All right, that's it for this episode of TZGN. I'll see you in the next one.